Absolutely right. There are a series of risks out there which are going to present themselves in the near term. Um, and really, until you have that vaccine that's been distributed quite widely around the world, you're always going to have this link between the viral cases and the economy in terms of restrictions that are imposed. But we do know that there are vaccines available. They are being distributed. And by all intents and purposes, we should have, by the middle of the year, at least a large swathe of the population around the world who has been inoculated. So we do look past the near-term weakness in terms of what we see in the slowdown in Europe, US, the viral cases, and think about that broader recovery that will come through in terms of the economy uh, and in terms of the equity market as we see earnings start to pick up more and more on the basis of that improved economic outlook. Sure, but how do you uh, break your outlook for 2021 between the first half and the second half? What is your assessment of the macroeconomic picture uh, between H1 and uh, H2? Because there's going to be a lot that changes on the virus front, on vaccine rollout, and how that impacts the economy as well. Yeah, certainly it will be uh, time dependent and also thinking about the regional allocation will be important as well. So it is a case of this lingering weakness we see uh, in Europe and the US carrying over into the early part of next year. And you will likely see a contraction in the economy in the US, at least in the first quarter. Um, but we do know that as we've experienced with the viral pickup in the past, when those restrictions do come imposed, when the containment measures are enacted, they do work. And we have seen those being prevalent in the European situation. They will work in the US. And so uh, as the weather gets better, as people actually start to um, self-isolate themselves, we will have those numbers come down. And a lot of those worries about the viral spread will start to wane. I mean, it's not the first time we've had these waves of the virus across the globe. And so there will be some sort of market sentiment that goes with that idea that we are moving past the worst of that. And I do expect that to start to play out uh, in the latter half of the first quarter uh, and into the second quarter. And in the meantime, you're going to have a lot of positive headlines around the vaccine and its distribution. The biggest risk to that view, obviously, is around the distribution of the vaccine going to plan. So we watch that very closely. And also the acceptance of the vaccine by the population to take them, that you do reach these herd immunity levels in a, in a timely fashion. So there are some risks around those views. But the base case is that we do see that vaccine come through, that we do see that improvement in growth, that we do see a pickup uh, in the private sector, a resumption in consumption in households, as well as from businesses. The unemployment rate continues to fall, wages grow, and therefore you move into the start of an economic cycle, which is going to have a bumpy start to it, but it's still the start of a new economic cycle and quite positive for risk assets on that basis.